preparing for mobilisation. <laughs> Who is at fault? I can't say for certain. And how has the team managed with me away? I'm back and I'm raring to go. It's a fast-paced episode this week as we continue to expand Vapor Clean. So keep watching to see exactly what it's like to run a growing UK cleaning business. I'm Lee, this is Vapor Clean. Let's see behind the clean. I'm back and I'm raring to go. For our regular viewers, you will already know, I've been away for a couple of weeks on annual leave and it was absolutely amazing, I will say. Yes, we did drop an episode of Behind the Cleans. We put a bit of a filler video up, but it's a great video. Click the link above. It is how to clean your air fryer the quickest and easiest way. Um, but I'm glad to be back on Behind the Cleans and I am raring to go for the next quarter within our business. It is Tuesday the 5th of November. Yes, November. Um, Monday was a bit of a blur. I was in yesterday, but to be honest, it was just a complete and utter whirlwind. I walked into over 500 emails and obviously had to catch up from the last couple of weeks. The team have absolutely smashed it, kept it together, but we have had some bumps in the road which we need to sort out. So I've got more meetings to go today. We've got lots going on. I've got a big tender that I'm going to be submitting that I'll tell you about later in the week. And we've got the the mobilization meeting with the big external cleans. So let's get cracking, let's get the week going and let's keep this energy up. All before 10am. Buddy! <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Today's definitely not going to be my favourite day of the week. It's going to be hard work and it's going to be a lot of brain power, um, which isn't great for when you've just come back off annual leave, I don't think. But there's a, a big tender that we want to take part in. I don't like tendering, I've got to be honest, because it is always very heavily weighted on price. But this one is one that we're really excited about. We know we can deliver it because we know the site so well. Ashley, our contracts manager, actually used to manage it in her role before she joined Vapor Clean. So she knows exactly what's required and how to make it work. However, typical tender process, it's form after form after form, and you really got to sell yourself and you know prove how you can deliver that service, even though you then have to price it as cheaply as you possibly can. The hardest part for me, which I do think is wrong, is the fact that they always try and restrict you as to what you can do price-wise. So you have to put it in for a three-year tender in this scenario, um, but you have to fix your price for those three years. So you never know what's going to happen. And if you look at just the last three years that we've had, you know, one pound an hour for two years um, in wage increase, 60 pence an hour coming in um, ooh, April for real living wage accredited, which you have to be for this tender, so that levels the playing field a little bit, but it is a lot of pressure. But when you want to grow, when you want to deliver top end service and you want to be one of the, the most trusted cleaning company in the Southwest, that is our aim. You've got to do these things and you've got to submit it. So I'm going to bite the bullet, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to put it together and we will see how we get on. Hopefully, we'll get on successful, but it will still take weeks to go through. We've also got Scott popping in later on. We've got more prep work to do, ready for the big external work that we've got starting and getting ready for the meeting tomorrow. So we'll catch up with Scott as well, get some bits done and see how we get on. Um, that <laughs> Plug it. <laughs> you glad I'm recording now? Can, can, we, can we bypass <laughs> right this? Can we just... Yeah. Um, That's what we've done with all of them. We tried to do it when we were on site, didn't we? Where does it go? I don't think we had a joiner, that was the trouble. Mm. Oh, put it back. Oh, it's a bit, bit dirty. You lose that. Oh, wait, I'll take the streets there. Yeah. Um, what was that? Scott's got all the hose. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> I was using the hose last night, funny enough. There you are, was it? <laughs> Expensive. <laughs> Expensive hose. <laughs> we will, yeah.
kick you that way. Took that out that way. Have you ever come off that one? One of them does. Yeah. You've got a couple of these poles that are round. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to put them around. There's nothing. I've got one too before. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the other The joys that is tendering. I said it wouldn't be fun, did I? Um, we had a really tight deadline on this, which was made harder by me because obviously I've been away for a couple of weeks. Um, computer system crashed when I'm halfway through it, <laughs> which is a nightmare because everything's got to be uploaded online. So that's caused me some issues and some delays. I'm then panicking, I'm not going to get it done. And all of a sudden I get an update to say that the deadline's been pushed back so by a couple of weeks. So I'm thankful for that because it gives me a bit of breathing space, but typical bloody tendering, I tell you. Um, I really don't like tendering, but as I said, needs done. So I'm just going to persevere and see if we can get it done. Really looking forward to tomorrow now with the external work. Danny's been busy all week getting that booked in, scheduled, sorting everything out well, for the last two weeks. And um, yeah, it was a good catch up with Scott as well. He's ready, raring to go and looking forward to really getting his teeth into it now. So yeah. Heading in the right direction this week for sure. Customer service team have absolutely been smashing it this week. They are three quarters of the way towards hitting target for the week already, which is good. So yeah, really positive vibe going on today. I'm loving it. Even if my head is hurting because I've been trying to do really serious, boring stuff all day. <laughs> Huge thanks for being so efficient and turning it around and getting it set up and organized. Being ready to start sooner than they expected. Gotta take that as a win, haven't we? consistency is not there it's there because we have the volume but maintaining that volume is all is a lot of legwork is how I'd put it you know it's just one of those days and you don't get anything done and it's just you're jumping from one thing to another to another to another um, I've got back from our meeting jumped straight onto a call for someone that's asked to for me to get in touch about lots of jobs that they want some support with they're another contractor um, they're a national contractor, we're obviously regional, and they want to, they've seen some of the stuff we've been doing and hear about us and they want to work with us. So 
Um, really positive call, got on that one, jumped straight off, jumped straight on another call because I got another phone call from someone else and that's taken me literally an hour. Come straight out of there, I've got stuff that is piling up I need to do. And now I've just had a phone call from one of, well, I haven't, I've been pulled in by Danny about one of the technicians who's got, it's only a minor thing, um, but what do you do? You've got to go. They've got an oven that the door isn't um, closing properly and they're worried about breaking the customer's oven door. We're not going to do that. Um, I've got no one else closer by. Um, I'm, I'm the closest, so I've got to go. It's frustrating. My head is pounding. It's been one hell of a week to come back, I tell you. Um, mixture of good, frustrating, but yeah, could have done without it, to be honest. I've got so much I, don't, I need to get done today. Um, it's currently five past three, and I haven't even started what I needed to start, so we'll see. But yeah, let's go and have a look at this and see where we are. Slide and hide oven. I mean, obviously, I can't show you too much in there. The customer was present and didn't really want me to be filming, um, which is understandable. It's really frustrating because what do you do? So it's a slide and hide oven, which, to be honest with you, they are lovely ovens. They're amazing. They work really well, um, and I don't blame, blame people for buying them. But when you try and take the door off to clean it, they are temperamental, especially after some age. And if you have one and you don't take it off for some time, which most people don't for many years, then, then you're increasing the chance that it will actually fail when you go to take it off. And that seems as though exactly what's happened. One of the clips at the bottom has basically is not holding. So you clip it up and it's supposed to hold there and that enables you to get to the next clip, which you have to turn and then you can lift something else and then do this and do that. And it's, it's quite technical and you need to know what you're doing. Um, the first clip hasn't held. So it's been clipped up and I've got something in there and I can literally move it and it's just flopping up and down. Um, that sounds weird, doesn't it? But it's just flopping around, which means when we've tried to take the door off, it hasn't opened. So we put everything else back in place, and then we have um, gone to open it, carried on the rest of the clean, gone to close it, and everything else. But then it's flopped, and then it's, it's failed, and it's got locked in the open position, and it won't bloody hold. So, essentially, I can't get the door off. Like, yeah, I can't get the door off, and I can't get the door to close. So it's knackered. Thankfully, the customer is understanding but it looks like we have to potentially foot the bill for a new oven. Even though we probably haven't caused the problem, it's probably just due to age, wear and tear on the actual oven. Fuck! But, customer service comes first. I'm going to look after the customer. So. I don't know 100% essentially, I can't say for certain, but when the door's closed, you've got the bottom hinge which you've got to click your clips up, then you open it to 45 degrees, turn the two clips there, and then you pull it a little bit more, lift your handle, and then it should just lift off. George said he clipped those two clips, but they were very loose, then when he opened it and turned the other bit, he just couldn't get it to come off, um, which sounds about right. But then he said he basically didn't take the oven off. He said he couldn't take the door off. He told me he couldn't take the door off and everything else. Um, but it's gone in and it went out. I've tried everything. But there is. Yeah, I've spoken to him. I mean, I'll be honest. I've literally just said to her while we sat there that I'm probably going to break this door now because I'm going to force it, try and get it open so we can see what's going on. And I could not get it off. I already could see that the, the runner, the plastic runner on one side is broken. So that, that bit, that's what that is. That's, that's the runner on that side. So it was already broken anyway. It wasn't going to be right. I've then forced it and I broke the other side. So, 
I basically thought, fuck, we've got to replace the other one. So I've rung um, it's Brown's Domestic Appliances. Um, I think I've used them before. They are really good, genuine kind of guys. They won't do the work if it's not worth doing. So I've just rung him now. I said, I think I know what you're going to tell me. I explained it all to him. And he went, did you think I was going to say you're not repairable? I said, yeah, basically. He went, that's fine. I can repair that. Um, so what he's got to do is go around now and look at it. Get the door out. See what parts he needs to repair, replace. And then he's got to order the parts. But it takes three to seven days to get the parts. So he said, he can't, get, he can't even go and look at it until next Wednesday, Thursday. Um, but basically, they're on holiday from Sunday. So that's why I just said if we get, if they can get us access into the property, then we might be able to get in under it. But yeah. it's standard at the moment. I think we're, we're going to be covering the cost of the repair. Yeah. I mean, she was lovely, bless her. She was absolutely, absolutely lovely. I. I felt, I feel horrible. It's hard when they're nice. No, I'd rather it when they're nice. Because at least they understand we're trying our best. It's a genuine mistake. Something, like, I, I honestly, I've said to her, I said, I don't know if we've done something wrong or not. I said, but these are the worst ovens to take the doors off. They are the worst ovens to clean. I'd rather clean a million ovens than one of these. I said, but we do do it. We know what we're doing. I said, but sometimes you do it and it still goes wrong because the clips just give up the ghost. Um, and I've had it before where you try and explain something like that to someone and they're just horrible about it. Yeah. Whereas this woman is just like, she's really, like, don't get me wrong, I've also told her that if we're at fault, we're at fault, we're going to pay for it. Um, but it's like, I don't know. But she was lovely about it, so I don't know. Oh, look, I can't say I want to drop my keys off to someone while I'm on holiday. long conversation the other day with one of the team about mental health and I'll be honest and say I'm one of these of ah just get on with it I'm old school you know if um if one of my kids falls over it's a spit and a rub on it and go on you'll be right get up and off you go I, I'm old school I'm rough around the edges I joke and say I don't do fluffy it's tough love or nothing S simple as that that's me um I don't apologize for that because that's me um but we do try and support all of our team members as much as we can and ultimately different people need different support and, and things like that as well um, this particular person has been approached by a couple of other people and it hadn't gone down well or it hadn't had an impact so I wanted to try and have a conversation with them and we didn't know which way it would go because of my approach frankly but it was a good conversation in the sense that that tough love approach um, may well have been what they needed and I turned around and said, reasonably blasé, to be honest, that I don't, oh yeah, I don't get bad mental health, you know, I'm, I've never really been affected like that. And I quite often myself put that down to actually being, just being quite mentally strong. But I, after thinking about it later on, I thought to myself, that's not true. Because we were talking about how things that they can do and things that they can put in place to actually help them manage and cope. Um, and I realised, and we talked about routine and stuff like that, and I soon, re soon realised that, hang on a minute, I probably never suffered to that degree, or to a, to a serious degree, because I've got lots of coping mechanisms in place. Not after the fact, I've, I've done it probably unconsciously before. So like these days, I'm really reliant on exercise. So I, ex so I exercise and lift weights and everything in the mornings now. Obviously I have my horses, and I love my horses and my time in the mornings. I'm a really early morning person and I love all of that. 
um, and I don't know if I'd have that separation. I'm also very, very lucky in the sense that I have my kids and my wife as well, although that comes with its own pressures as well. So I wouldn't necessarily call that a coping mechanism, but obviously it does give me a reason to get up and keep going and things like that. So um, then of course we've got my music. You know, I listen to music pretty much non-stop. The minute I get up in the morning, my headphones go in and I've got music all the way through. And I normally do about two, two and a half hours in the morning before I get back and have a shower. So I listen to music all that time. You never get in the truck, music's on. I go in the office, oh, you've got the headphones on or the speaker on, whatever it is. So it's all these things really. Um, but it was an interesting conversation. Obviously, we'll, we're, we're going to be helping that, that team member as much as we possibly can. I think that's the point. It is about getting those coping mechanisms in place. And that's what we want to help them do. They actually, well, after starting with us, gave up a few of their outside hobbies because of time constraints. And that was one of the things I said, that, you know, we, we, we need to change that. We need to make it so you can actually commit to other things outside of one of those little work vocals. So, yeah. That's that for this morning. Regular viewers will know we've been dealing with a couple of customers that have gone into administration. If you haven't seen that episode, click the link above so you can check it out. It is a very good episode, even if I do say so myself. Um, the situation obviously isn't good. It's one contract customer that went into administration. It, you've got to check it out because it's a, it's a very strategic way they've dealt with it. Um, but unfortunately, because of the amounts that they owe, we don't, and the fact that they are guaranteed to the larger debtors, we don't really stand a chance of getting any money back. Um, we've just got to shrug that off and, and walk away as bitter as the taste is to do that. The other one was a pub that had gone into administration. We got notified that it was happening. It was only a specialist clean, a one-off clean, and we got notified a couple of weeks before we were due to go. So we just, we had a deposit for the clean, but we hadn't had the full amount. The remainder was due on completion. So we just gave them the call, we explained the situation, just said, look, we are really sorry, but with this information, we're going to need to pay you to pay in full before we complete the clean, so we know you can afford to do it. Um, they were actually really understanding, they paid the remainder, and we carried out the clean, and everything's gone well. Don't really know the full details of whether or not they're going to carry on, but um, I wish them all the luck, whatever's going on, because business is very, very hard at the moment. It's just slow going, and especially when you're working with B2B, because businesses are being careful, especially now that the budget's come out, because it's not gonna get any easier for at least a year to 18 months, if you ask me, just because with all these national insurance increases and everything else that is increasing cost-wise for businesses, where are they getting their money from? That, that's the thing. I don't think the government, and I don't want to get political, but I don't think the government really understand that businesses, especially small businesses, can't afford to keep dishing out extra money. And actually, I think the response is going to be to let people go. So where we've previously, for the last few years, been dealing with a labour shortage, we're now actually going to be going the other way, and we're going to, we're going to be dealing with a, a job shortage. We're going to be back in that boat, because they're not helping anyone, which then, of course, is going to have another impact as well. So honestly, since 2020, dare I say it, COVID, business has been very, very tough. Um, and it's not getting any easier. It's really not. So, you know, it's only the really strong that's going to survive, but... That's fine. We'll just keep pushing on because some things you can't change. You've just got to keep fighting and battling through. They're not even called lemon custard creams. They're just called lemon creams. Yeah, they're not creams. I mean, they are really lemony, aren't they? They're making my eyes tingle. Why did Danny think that was a good idea? Did she know they were lemon when she bought them? Oh, she likes them. So we'll try them then put them on her desk. And then go. Or we can actually really surprise. No, they don't want to shit. Sorry, you said that'd be louder, didn't you hear that? <laughs> 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 <laughs
Go on, Ed. It's not gonna be that bad if you only take an ant bite, isn't it? I mean, they got the packaging right because they matched the colour of the stuff inside. They actually taste, oh. which isn't surprising really, a lot like a lemon sherbet. That's what it is. No, it is. Do you know what it tastes like? Lemon. Lemon. Oh, hold on. It tastes like a gluten-free, dairy-free lemon juice, okay? That's why you have never had one. Right, I own it. You just literally said the first three things. Gluten-free, dairy-free. They're going for a niche rather than niche in a niche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my son doesn't eat meat, hasn't had meat for four years, mm -hmm. eats fish. Oh, oh my god, god him a pesto and cheese, cheese pasta. Talk to me, me. pesto and cheese. It. Always give him pesto. Right? Uh, yeah. You would have thought the same with me. It's parmesan. Yeah? And, and, it's got parmesan cheese in. So what, pesto? Yeah, it's got parmesan cheese in. I've been giving my son parmesan cheese for the last fucking four years. I found out. It's not suitable for vegetarians. Pesto is not suitable for vegetarians and nor is parmesan cheese. It's got meat in. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's just, I found out when I did TikTok. Why is it got meat in it? Like, like, it's not like, meat. I don't understand it's, it's not right for vegan. Yeah, but, yeah, isn't it? It's but like then I suppose it's like, um, yeah, gelatin, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a sort of yeah. in it. And I don't know if it's got oh, two packets no, of Tortellini with pesto in it. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. What? Can you leave them over there? What are they? I mean, I haven't. I'm just gonna die. Well, yeah, I know, but they smell the same. Not melons, though. Why? Why wouldn't you smell food when you eat it? You smell haggis. Fuck, that's disgusting. But actually, tastes pretty good. I like a bit haggis. Yeah. I love it. What? Well, is this not got milk in? I was trying to put these. Fuck. Yeah, fuck. They taste the same. No, we fucking don't. Thank you. Oh, they definitely don't. They're worse than them fucking biscuits. I love a Maryland cookie. No, they don't. They've got no butter in them. There's a fucking tub of butter in the fridge as well. Have you ever seen that? Oh. They taste the same. They don't taste. They really don't. I'm sorry. I'm not going to eat it. I bet if you go and buy a pack of normal cookies and just put them together, we could pick them out. Yeah, we could. Don't even have to fucking eat them. The one thing that I haven't given much information about yet, but I did allude to in the last episode, is how we're adding 12 new specialist services to our work at VaporClean. So while I was away, and this has been a long time in the planning, Danny and Jordan went off on a two-day training course to get thoroughly, thoroughly trained, CPD certified, on biohazard cleaning. Now we've always dabbled, we've got involved, but we've never gone the whole hog with a lot of these services. Some of our clients have been asking for it and the demand is growing for a full on professional service. There's too many people out there cutting corners and not delivering a good enough service these days. So we're investing massively in the team and everything else within the business to make sure we can deliver those services to the right standard that we need to be delivering them. And now that's everything from needle sweeps, hoarders cleans, mold cleaning, crime scene cleaning, um, suicide cleaning, and so many more. It's part of our expansion plan for the business to obviously enable us to undertake more work, bring on more specialist technicians, and basically just do more to hit our goal of being the most trusted cleaning company within the Southwest. We're excited to see how that expands and we will keep bringing it to you. 
That is it for this week though. Thank you very much for watching. What a week it's been and there is a lot more to come. So what do you need to do? You need to click that subscribe button below, turn on that notification bell so you can keep up with everything that goes on. And I would very much appreciate if you would just share this video with one person that you know that would appreciate the watch. Thank you very much for watching though and we will see you next week behind the cleans.